It's time now for our weekly check on the world of science and tech with CTV Science and Technology Specialist Dan Riskin joining us virtually. Dan, good to see you from afar. Good to see you. I wish I was with you, but uh, we'll, we'll make do with this. Yeah, we'll make it happen. Uh, speaking of making things happen, this is kind of an interesting story about like uh, avoiding mosquitoes, ways to, some tips to sort of avoid getting bitten by mosquitoes. Avoid beer, weed, and sex. Dan, yeah, I like, take it away. Yeah. Quite the I don't trifecta. like mosquitoes, but at some point, you know, it's it's worth it. You know, <laughs> you got to pick your battles. So this is uh, from a, a rock festival in the Netherlands. Uh, scientists set up a tent. Volunteers could go in and have their mosquito attractiveness measured. You put your arm against this mosquito cage and the mosquitoes can smell your arm and they go towards it. Mm. But they can't bite you because the mesh is too thick. And so but this computer vision thing can measure how many mosquitoes go toward you and how many go to the other side of the cage where they just have some sugar water. And different people are attractive in different levels. And we know that already. But what about their behavior? How does that fit in? So as people went in, they answered this questionnaire about what they'd been up to. And it turns out that people who had been drinking beer were 35% more likely to have mosquitoes go towards them. If they'd been smoking marijuana, 35% increase. Wow. And if they had shared a bed with another person the night before... 34% increase. And so all of these activities, all these hedonistic activities that mosquitoes, the Puritans, want us not to have fun doing, um, increase the level of mosquitoes. And, uh, and mm. so if you don't like mosquito bites, maybe avoid those activities. Interesting. So it's like God's punishment for the wicked. I just get some bugs. <laughs> exactly. I just get exactly. Some bugs spray. exactly. Yeah. Who knew mosquitoes were doing the, the God, the Lord's work? That's yeah, the so Lord's nice of work. them. I always wondered why mosquitoes existed. I'm like, what do they serve in our ecosystem mm -hmm. that they need to be here to annoy me and make me? Itch? Saving us from sin. <laughs> there yeah, we, that's there what it, it goes. Is. Okay. Uh, and turning to this, Dan, which is really interesting because Toronto is now like the most gridlocked city. A few smart cars can actually reduce congestion for all. Which smart cars? cars are we talking about? Well, this is a, a pilot project by Nissan. And, and so they have this stuff in their cars, adaptive cruise control and technology that'll keep you in your lane. And that's great if you're the driver of the car. It, you know, if, if you uh, want to be going up that frozen highway, you just you set your preferred speed and it just matches the speed of the car in front of you up to the maximum of whatever speed you've set. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have to pay attention as a stop and go traffic. But what they did is they introduced a new algorithm so that when uh, a car was experiencing delays, it would communicate that to uh, the, the cellular network. And then that cellular network would share that information with the other cars in the system. It was anonymous, anonymous mm -hmm. but uh, that way a car could see that there's gridlock up ahead. And when it saw that, it started braking early to sort of slow itself so that it didn't hit mm. that gridlock really fast and slam the brakes. And because it slowed down a bit, that changed the dynamic of all the cars behind that car mm. and it created this smoother ride. And so by having this in place, they reduced hard braking by like 80%. Uh, coming to a complete stop was down by 70%. But they also saw that even if just like 5% of the cars in the whole roadway had this technology, the whole thing was flowing more smoothly. And wow. so this is another advantage to these self-driving cars is if they have these kinds of technologies in place, not everybody has to have it for everyone mm. to get a benefit mm. from it. So, I, you know, looking at traffic in Toronto, I, I can't help but think this is a perfect place for that technology to make yeah. life yeah. better. Yeah, it's interesting. It really is. When I read that study uh, on Thursday or Friday, I thought, ah, that is pretty interesting. And we could really do with that here. Uh, that's for sure, Dan. Uh, finally, let's talk about this. Uh, not a lot of sun out there this morning, a pretty overcast and miserable day. But the sun is getting stronger every year, it turns out. Yeah, so, I mean, we all know that the, the northern lights come and go, you know, sort of at whim, but there are these 11-year cycles where the sun sort of has a lot of activity and we get lots of northern lights and then it dips after six years or so and there's, a, there's not a lot of activity. And then, you know, six years after that, there's a lot of activity again. So these 11-year cycles, and right now we're at the peak of one of these cycles. But researchers said, okay, well, what about the activity of the sun after you take away the 11-year big picture? And what they found is over the last 17 years or so, since 2008, there's been a steady increase in the amount of activity in the sun. So that means that when we're getting a, a lot of activity, a solar maximum, we're getting a ton of activity. And in fact, we saw those amazing northern lights back in 2024. I think it was in May where we were breaking records for the biggest, brightest northern mm. lights. Mm -hmm. um, and so we don't exactly know what this means. I mean, sometimes, you know, we, there's there's solar records going back hundreds of years. And there have been periods where it was very, very quiet for decades. But uh, a period like this where it's really ramping up, we didn't expect that. We didn't notice it until now. And so this may mean better northern lights in the years to come, which is exciting for everybody. Or mm -hmm. uh, it may mean that the, the sun is 
is just getting grumpy. And, and we don't really have any control of the situation. All we can do is look at it. We feel a lot of control in the world, but mm -hmm. really we're on this speck flying through space. And what the sun decides it wants to do with us, the sun will do with us. So yeah. that's where we're sitting. Yeah. OK, let's hope it doesn't burn us. Uh, CTV <laughs> science and tech expert Dan Riskin joining us live virtually. Hope to see you in person again, Dan. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Let's do it next week. Thanks okay. a lot. Thanks, Dan.